This is Keir Starmer addressing uh, the the felling of Edward Colston this morning, speaking on LBC. Yeah, it uh, shouldn't have been done in that way. Um, completely wrong to um, pull a statue down like that. But um, stepping back, that statue should have been brought down a long time, should have been taken down a long, long time ago. You can't in 21st century Britain have, um, you know, a slaver um, on a statue. A statue is there to honour people. Um, and you can't have that in 21st century Britain. That statue should have been brought down properly with consent and put, I would say, in a museum. Um, this was a man who was responsible for 100,000 people being moved from Africa to the Caribbean as slaves, including women and children, who were branded on their chests with the name of the company that he ran. Of the 100,000, 20,000 died en route and they were chucked in the sea. He should not be in a statue um, in Bristol or anywhere else. He should be in a museum because we need to understand this. Shouldn't I mean, that should have been taken down a long time ago. So the majority of that clip was Keir Starmer explaining why he thinks that the statue of Edward Colston should have been taken down a long time ago. But it's that first sentence um, which has caused some controversy, at least on the left. Um, I'll lay my cards out on the table in a moment. First of all, I want to go to you, Bell, for your reaction to that video. Was he right to sort of say it shouldn't have been done in that way? Um, but, you know, the statue should have come down a long time ago. I mean, definitely. Obviously, we all agree on the fact that the statue shouldn't have, should have come down a long time ago. But that it not being done in that way. I don't think any of us are in a position at any point in time to say it shouldn't have been done in that way. Uh, I think of actually, and, and because it because it's in this particular co context, how people have jumped on the fact that um, these individuals have committed some sort of criminal damage or they've done something wrong. And I think about the fact that when, when people die in police custody, again, there's always some sort of, uh, explanation there's always oh actually it's it's alleged nothing has actually happened so it's not alleged that somebody has committed criminal damage people are insisting that these individuals have committed criminal damage and i don't i don't think that's necessarily right to say that until any sort of investigation has been put forward but also i don't i don't know if it's appropriate for there to be an investigation when we think about the fact that there are people genuinely um still fighting for justice for their families and in need of police resources to do that um be it through actually having having in, in contact with the police and having died in that way or people like belly majinga or um shukri abdi those individuals who need who need police resources to to, to find justice and instead we're going to use those to to look into what's happened when a, a slave trader statue has been put into the harbour. I just don't think that's the that's the best that's the best use of resource at all. Not just that, the Bristol Police actually probably had the best explanation when you when you heard what happened because I, I saw that the statue rolling down. And I thought, gosh, aren't there any police there? Is nothing happening? And one of them actually came on TV, explained, look, we understand what the history of this statue is and and what a contentious issue it's been for black people in the city and because of the type of protest that's happening um, and because of public safety we saw it happening yes and we thought that the best thing to do was let it happen so the police thought that the best thing to do was let it happen and and just generally how what what happens um in history after a while in history people don't judge things uh, the same i think about a group of people at the beginning of the last century who were frequently um accused of criminal damage they were also fighting for civil rights they were a group of women they were called the suffragettes i don't believe anybody would condemn them today in fact a couple of years ago millicent Fawcett's um, statue was put in in parliament square uh, the same woman that was accused of criminal damage in her in her civil rights struggle um for, 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 for women's rights and a few statues down from her is nelson mandela another individual who this government called a terrorist so i just think to myself we we, we need we need to think about things in in the current context and, and just be a bit more mindful of of what we say about individuals when they commit when when they do certain things and and just the fact that it was a statue of the slave of a slave trader it wasn't an individual it wasn't it wasn't an individual that has been killed. It wasn't a man. It was a hunk of metal which symbolised um, racism and, and shouldn't have been there in the first place. And the fact that it's at the bottom of the, of the harbour now uh, is something that people people may 
disagree with. But if there is any attempt to use public money, especially after years of austerity, to try and fish that thing out of the harbour at an expense to something else, there are going to be a lot of questions to answer. Mm. I mean, I agree with all of that on a, on a personal level. I'll go to Aaron in, in one moment. I mean, my, my thought on, on this was that, yes, I, I celebrate what they've done. I think they were absolutely right to do it. But I also think that as the leader of the Labour Party, you want to be careful what battles you choose. And I feel the Tories are going to be, the Tories don't want to have a conversation about racism and slavery. We saw that today when their spokesperson was was unwilling to sort of say whether or not Boris Johnson thinks statues of slave traders could come down. They're desperate to have a conversation about law and order, about whether or not the law should be enforced and people should follow laws. And I think if, if Keir Starmer had um, sort of come out and said, oh yeah, no, it is fine in some exceptional circumstances to break the law, then we would have had a week-long debate about that. And I've heard people say, well, he could have just not condemned it or he could have just sort of sat on the fence. When you're sitting next to Nick Ferrari, he actually doesn't normally let you sit on the fence. So he would have been pushed on that question. And then we would have had a headline about whether or not it's fine to break the law instead of a headline about racism and slavery. Maybe I'll push that. I'll put that straight back to you, Bell, before going to Aaron. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the main point is whether or not they have actually broken the law. And I think it, perhaps it was difficult f because of the fact that the media and the government have portrayed it in the fact that they have broken the law. They've come out right and said these people have have done something and they've committed criminal damage. But the, the, the point I'm trying to make is it's not even necessarily about whether it's right or wrong. It's the fact that when black people die, we need to look into the situation. When the statue of a slaver is thrown into the harbour, um, you know, we can instantly label people um, as, as, as criminals. And, and that's not necessarily what we do in this country. It's, it's innocent until proven guilty. But why, when it comes to black people, it's one way. When it comes to a hunk of racist metal, it's another way. What they did was probably criminal damage. Um, uh, I wish I had been with them. I, I wish I had done, you know, if I had done that, I, I, the people involved in taking down that statue would never be involved in a more righteous, morally just action for the rest of their lives. Uh, but it was probably against the law. But guess what? So was Rosa Parks. You know, what she did was against the law, uh, having an interracial, you know, marriage in the United States in many states before the mid 1960s, they were called miscegenation laws. That was against the law. You know, often things can be against the law. It doesn't mean it's about right or wrong. Uh, so in a way, you know, what we need to say to people, what we need to communicate is there is a bit and this is true. There is a big enough movement here that if that happens to you, there'll be support. If there are legal costs, they would be backed. And I think BLM now has had such goodwill from BLM UK. It's raised a lot of money. It has so much goodwill. If there are people who are arrested and charged, uh, they will get uh, the, the the appropriate legal backing. It's criminal damage ultimately. You know what the suffragettes did was criminal damage. I, I think it's it's justified. So then you need a you need a conversation around justification. Now, if they were charged with something like violent disorder, uh, that would be a political charge because clearly it's, it's not violent disorder. It was just a piece of inanimate metal which was taken down and, and put in a river. Nobody felt. Uh, endangered, nobody felt their sa personal safety was compromised, that they might be subject to violence. Uh, so, so it all kind of depends, you know, if, if this was being subject to political, uh, you know, sort of, if this was a sort of political fight picked by the government, picked by the Crown Prosecution Service, they would be charged with violent disorder, then it becomes a very political contentious debate. If it's just criminal damage, you know, that'd be fascinating if they were found guilty of criminal damage and then they were being sentenced by a judge. I'd be intrigued to know what the judge would do. If it was just some old fuddy-duddy, Oxbridge-educated, 70-year-old white judge uh, sentencing some young black people uh, to a really harsh sentence for criminal damage for taking down the statue of a racist. Well, that would tell us a lot about the limits of our criminal justice system in this country. Mm. I mean, it's also, I, I think you, sh you should encourage leniency, right? I mean, y y there's a difference between saying it wasn't against the law and just saying, well, it probably, I mean, it looked like criminal damage, didn't it? But I think the judge should take into account the fact that they were doing this for you know, a, pr a pretty good reason. And hopefully they get off of a suspended sentence or something. In all cases, if, if something happens to an individual and they die, it's not necessarily murder. I know it sounds like a, a terrible thing to say, but some people may have done things in, in, in self-defense. So it's not as clear cut as... Um, you know, they've definitely done this. And, and you know, some people have been having a discussion about that um, as, as well. And just, just thinking to themselves, what, how interesting it would actually be to go to court. Not that I want it to get there, but yeah, it would certainly set a very interesting precedent. And I, I'd hope 
that if it did, people would be very, very clear and um, and yeah, clear about the fact that it, whereas something may have happened and it might not have been what is within the current law at the moment, that doesn't necessarily mean at the end of it that anybody should face any prosecution. So YouGov did a poll, Britain's on the removal of the Edward Colston statue. Can we get this up? Approve of the statue being removed and the way in which it was done. 13% of people agree with that. Uh, approve of the statue being removed, but not in the way in which it was done. 40% of people agree with that. Disapprove of the statue being removed. 33% of people uh, agreed with that and don't know 14%. Um, so, I mean, what I was saying on on Twitter today was that I'm 100% in that 13%, but I completely understand why Keir Starmer wouldn't pick that particular battle. Um, Ash, what are your thoughts? On this matter of the polling, and I think this kind of speaks to the situation that Keir Starmer was in, because I understood the point that you were trying to make, Michael, but for me, um, I want a Labour leader who wants to change people's minds about certain things. And I want a Labour leader who is able to articulate a position of solidarity with uh, you know, racially oppressed communities. And I don't feel that Keir Starmer has done that so far in a way which feels powerful, authentic or real or likely to, I think, um, you know, be a strong enough bulwark against this kind of rising tide of, you know, nationalism and racism that that we're seeing in this country. And so when it comes to that 13% uh, approves of the circumstances in which the statue was taken down. 40% doesn't think it should be up, but doesn't approve in the way in which it happened. We get to the really sticky point about how we in this country think of our own history when we get the opportunity to learn about it, which is often at a point which is far too late, we go, oh yeah, that's quite bad. But because it's too late, we don't actually get the chance to do the thing that we could have done before, which is demonstrate that our legal system is capable of delivering justice or demonstrate the fact that we have an education system which is able to, uh, you know, rather than uh, trying to whitewash colonial history or minimize colonial history is actually going to deliver that kind of confrontation with history that you see in other countries, in, in particular Germany. Um, we have a sort of condemning of, of the means by which people express themselves when all other avenues have been closed off to them. And so that's the, that's the place that Keir Starmer finds himself in, which is, does he go along with this quite, you know, pacified political population um, or, or does he does he try and change it? Does he try and, you know, shape uh, the common sense in some way? And I think what was demonstrated in that Nick Ferrari interview today, and this is also why I called Keir Starmer a neek, is that he backed off from, from that. Now, it might be a pick your battles thing, and I do understand that you cannot hold Keir Starmer to the same political standards um, as you would, you know, an editor on Navarra, for instance, two very different kinds of political jobs. Um, but I wish, I wish there had been some acknowledgement of the legitimacy of the anger that led to that act. And there was none. There was only, oh, wish we'd taken it down sooner. Well, you didn't. And now Edward Colston's in the harbour. Sorry about it. Mm, I think that's good. I mean, David, David Lammy gave an uh, a intervention on GM, what's it called? Good Morning Britain which sort of basically took the same line as Keir Starmer, but emphasising what you just said there. I think that's a very good point. Um, Aaron wants to come in. Well, I agree, actually, but with your point, Michael. The essential point is I don't think Keir Starmer should be a, a, apologising for potential criminal damage charges. I don't think the Labour leader should be doing that. Uh, I don't think... I don't, I don't, it, it's for the social movements to do that. Now, two caveats to that. Firstly, he could have said everything he said and then finished it with basically what Leila Moran did, by saying, but look, isn't it outrageous in the 21st century, we have citizens who feel they have to resort to this. Uh, you know, within six months of becoming prime minister, I would do X, Y, Z. We would review uh, X, Y, Z in, in regards to accelerating, expediting the process whereby democratic process for removing something as, as objectionable as a statue of a slave trader can happen. Clearly here, the normal bureaucratic process was inadequate. We have to ask why. He could have done that. So he could have done the critique. He didn't have to go all in. And he could have said, you know what? I'm doing something nobody else in the political sort of establishment is doing here. I'm offering a long-term solution. And he didn't. And it was just purely an instinctive, I don't want to get my my hands caught here, uh, you know, in the mangle by, by Nick Ferrari and RBC. It was a purely defensive posture. 
that's concerning. And, you know, look, he's only been leader for a few months. Uh, but I, I do think, you know, that would have been the best way to go. And then finally, people will say, well, he, he can win a general election. Corbyn can't possibly, possibly, you know, I mean, maybe that's that's the bet. That's why he, he said what he said. But at the same time, we need to understand that, well, OK, I think without any shadow of a doubt, a Labour leader being as overtly supportive of immigrant rights, LGBT issues, BAME communities, as Jeremy Corbyn has moved the dial in this country's political conversation significantly. Now, the question is, if Keir Starmer doesn't win in 2024, to what extent will he have moved the dial himself? You know, judging from this, you know, not very fast. There's a, there's a trade-off going on here. You don't do that so you can have a prime minister who can win a general election. But if he can't win, well, then it's been a complete and utter disaster. Thank you.